The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making the wise simple. Mm. Good day, dear viewer, and welcome to our Great Controversy series. Amen. Today we are looking at chapter 26, A Work of Reform. And with me in studio to look at this subject is Brother Karabo, mm -hmm. Sister Zuki, Brother Tabelo, and Brother Brighton. The scripture that I read uh, when I was making the introduction is found in Psalms 19 verse 7. The psalmist writes and he says, the law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. which means that it is above reproach. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be subtracted. Hallelujah. Speaking of the law of God, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. in this particular chapter, chapter 26, the fourth commandment is singled out. Mm -hmm. A work of reform is being urged with regards mm -hmm. to the fourth commandment, the Sabbath. I'm yeah. going to ask my brother to read for us yes, the fourth commandment. Amen. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Why is this particular commandment being singled out in a work of reform? Exodus chapter 20. I'm reading eight. from verses 8 in the King James Version. It says here, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For mm. in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And the Lord rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Yeah. Amen. 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 So the writer here, I'm going to quote from the Great Controversy. Yes. Page 452 and paragraph 3. Speaking of the fourth commandment, yes, she yeah. says, the seal of God's law is found in the fourth commandment. Yeah. This only of all the ten brings to view both the name and the title of the lawgiver. Amen. Mm -hmm. It declares him to be the creator of the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. and thus shows his claim to reverence and worship above all others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having read this, mm -hmm. this brings the question to say, if the fourth commandment is so important and so pivotal. Huh. Why is it the least known of all the commandments or the least observed of all the commandments? Hmm. Because when we look at Christendom or everyone who professes to know God, they acknowledge all the other commandments. But when it comes to the Sabbath, it is described as the Jewish Sabbath. Yeah. It is described as an archaic commandment. Yeah, yeah. It is described in all these other ways. So why has the enemy attacked the fourth commandment so much? Amen. Hey. Aside from this precept, there is nothing in the Decalogue to show by whose authority the law is given. Yeah. <clears throat> in other words, the, the commandment of the Sabbath, it declares him to be the creator of the heavens and the earth, and thus shows his claim to reverence and worship above all others. Your question was, why is the fourth commandment the least known? I would love to, to there's, there's a verse that says, for we are not fighting against flesh and, and blood, blood. Mm -hmm. but we are fighting against principalities. Yeah. So number one, we need to understand that we are at war. Yes. Mm. And while we are at war, one of the greatest weapons that show that all worship is due to God and that proves the authority of God is the commandment of the Sabbath. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other than the commandment of the Sabbath, there is no other commandment that show the authority of God. Yes. Yeah. So to, to, to the answer of your question, mm -hmm. I, according to how Mrs. Ellen G. White explains it, it is because they are trying to hide the worship of God from us. Yes. Hence, the fourth commandment is trodden upon so that we might not give him the worship he deserves. Yeah. Mm. Amen. And this commandment starts with the word remember. Yeah. He says remember to keep the Sabbath holy. You can only remember something <clears throat> that you have known, Sister Zuki. Yes. Yes. So he says to keep it 
holy. Now, I want us to go into the part of keeping the Sabbath holy okay. or hallowing it. I don't know, Brother Karabo, yeah, you just, seem to have something to say. You, you, we, we, we go to the part of keeping the Sabbath holy, you asked the yeah. question, um, I think it was, and you made a comment, a remark as well. Okay. And in the question that you asked was, why is the Sabbath hated? Yes. Mm -hmm. And why isn't it kept? Yes. And then the second... Then the second one was a statement or a remark that you made. And you said that others say that it's Jewish. Yes. So I think before we can try to address the why part, yes. I would love to address the Jewish part. Okay. Okay. And I mean, it also ties in with Brighton's answer as well. Right. When we read the verse itself, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes. I mean, the first argument is in the text is the word remember. Yes. Mm -hmm. which, which is an allusion to Genesis chapter 2. And mm -hmm. when you go to Genesis chapter 2, I mean, one, two, three. That was before there were Jews or yeah. there, were, there were Africans yes. or there were Chinese or there was black and white. There was only one kind of people. Mm. It's only in Genesis chapter 10 or so where people change. Yeah. But until then, chapter 10 verse 1 says there was one language and one people on earth. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yes. So the Sabbath command is so worse because it was even given before men could in, do anything. Yes. Mm. Because remember, God created in six literal days. Yeah. Yeah. On the seventh day, he rested mm. and he hallowed it. So the person who rested on the Sabbath was who? God. God. It was not Adam and Eve, it was God, correct? Yes. yes. Because Adam and Eve can't rest. They, are, they were fresh from God's hand. Yeah. I can imagine, you know, steam coming out. <laughs> 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 but they were fresh from God's hand. Yeah. So you get to see that God creates... After creating Adam and Eve as the crown of creation, mm. he rests from his work, yeah. Yeah. making the Sabbath the rest of God yeah. yes. and not the rest of men. Mm. So in other words, the word Shabbat, which simply means rest, mm -hmm. yeah. refers to the rest of God. Mm. Yes. Because it's God who rested, not Jews. Ah. Not Seventh-day Adventist or the Shembe or, or the Seventh-day Baptist, but it was God. Something. So when we get invited to keep the Sabbath holy, we mm -hmm. are called upon to remember yeah. that it's God who rested, ah. to mm. remember the rest of God. Yes. Now, I just want us to see that play out in the text when we read the verse. It says here, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Really pointing us to Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. Then it says, six days shall thou labor and do all the work. So we remember it by keeping it holy. In six days we work, we do all of our work. We labor and do everything. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Jehovah your God. Mm -hmm. That's a capital yeah. letter. And it's true. It's mm -hmm. the Sabbath of the Lord. Yes. And that is why it says, but you can do all of your work in six days. Yeah. But the seventh day is the rest. Because that's what the word Shabbat means. Yes. It's the rest of the Lord your God. Do you get that? It's yes. not the rest of the Hebrew. Yeah. Hey. Or Sabbath observing Christians. The text is clear. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? And then it, it says, in it, thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, and so forth. Yes. So the reason for us seizing from our labors mm -hmm. on the seventh day is the fact that God rested. Yeah. It's the fact that it's the Sabbath of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if you come under the authority of Jehovah as God, yeah. mm -hmm. then you will rest on the day that Jehovah rested. Yes. And not only you, but your son, your daughter, your servants, the guy who works in the garden, yes. the lady who works in the house, yeah. your employees, maybe if you have a company. Yeah. It even goes to an extent of saying your, your, your pets. It says your cattle and all of that. Mm. Yeah. So that means your cattle does not work. They don't till the ground yes. mm. on the Sabbath day. It even says the strangers which are within, within your, your gate. gate. Your gate. Okay. So if you have property, <laughs> there's no work in there as well. Yeah. And that's the commandment. Yeah. That's the commandment. Why? Because God rested. Yes. On the seventh day. What's with the issue of God and rest? He is the creator. Yeah. yeah. Because it really talks about the creatorship of God. And as virtue of him being the creator, God says, enter into my rest because I created and rested. He was resting from creation. That's yeah, right. I think I just want to comment on, you know, my brother Brighton and what um, brother Karabo is saying is that when you look at the fourth commandment, it's actually the only commandment in the mm -hmm. whole Decalogue that applies to how we relate with God and how we actually relate with man. Amen. You know, it tells us that Amen. we rest on the Sabbath day because God has rested, as has been rightfully said. Yep. And so Satan is trying to attack God. And so the easiest way to actually attack God is to attack an institution that shows you who God is. Yep. Yes. But on top of that, he's trying to attack God through the person of his people, right? Yeah. In attacking his people, then he, in essence, is attacking God. And what you see from the Sabbath rest is that it teaches us that when we relate with man, we need to relate with man such that they also partake of this rest that God has given. Amen. So in essence, it's, it's, Satan is attacking the Sabbath because he's attacking both parts of what the Decalogue is based on. For example, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. you know, someone comes to Christ and says, which is the greatest commandment? Yeah. And Christ says, 
love God and love thy neighbor. Yeah. And mm -hmm. only the Sabbath is actually tied with these two things. Wow. Yes. So Very Satan, good. in attacking wow. these, this actual <laughs> commandment, <laughs> he's attacking wow. the whole law in itself. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And this work of reform that we need to do isn't one for a specific people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you read, if you read in the Great Controversy, it, it says, not even in the Great Controversy, we can start with the Bible. Yeah. yeah. We can start with the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says in verse 8 yes, that sir. the Lord God, which gathereth uh, the outcasts of Israel, said, Yet I will gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. Mm -hmm. So this verse is saying that, uh, what this verse is, is, is saying is that even those who historically have not been the people of God. Yeah. Historically have been, uh, have been astray in, in, in their actions, in their customs, in their rituals for, for generations. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even these people uh, are to be ministered unto yeah. about uh, the, the Sabbath. Yeah. Mm. So I think this is an important uh, thing to take away from this chapter. And, yes, it, and I'm glad that's where it starts. Yeah. It starts by saying that the, 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 the prophecy in Isaiah is specific to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because Christianity, if, if you understand the history of Christianity, if you mm -hmm. understand how it started, yeah. you will know that uh, the Christians who were initially, they were Jews that started following Christ, mm -hmm. and then everyone else who started following Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this message is brought. That's true. This message prophesied in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. Isaiah yeah. chapter 56, mm -hmm. is one that is specific to our time now. Mm -hmm. So you see, uh, this, is, this is the layout that, that, that um, has been given to us uh, by God. That at this, at this day and age, we are given a message for, well, for this day and age, yes. Uh, we are given a message that we need to, we need to uh, give out with urgency for, for that matter. Because if you read the three angels' message, yes, sir. and you read the third, the third angels' message, then you, you, you begin to understand the urgency of this message. And I'm glad that you pointed out that it is not uh, for a specific people, mm -hmm. but for every, mm -hmm. for every nation, every yeah. tongue, every tribe. Amen. That's amazing. The Sabbath is the Creator's memorial, oh, as yes. we have pointed oh, out, okay. and a sign of His authority. Yes, mm -hmm. Hence the call for its restoration and exaltation to its rightful position. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to read, just before we go for the break, mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 2. It mm. says, Blessed is the man that doeth this, mm -hmm. and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Yeah. Mm. So, um, this verse talks of somebody who does not pollute the Sabbath. Yeah. Mm. And I would like to go back to the question that I asked initially to say, yeah. so how do we keep the Sabbath holy? Mm. Yes. Thank you. I, I'll just tap in fast, fast before yes. we, we, we go on for the break. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, testimonies to the church, volume six, uh, page 355. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Ellen G. White uh, explains on the, uh, on the observance of the Sabbath. And it reads, on Friday, let the preparation for the Sabbath be completed. See that all the clothing is in readiness and that all the cooking is done. Let the boots be blackened and the parts be taken. It is possible to do this. If you make it a rule, you can do it. The Sabbath is not to be given to the repairing of garments, to the cooking of food, to pleasure seeking, or to do any other worldly employment. Before the setting of the sun, let all secure work be laid aside and all secure, secular papers be put out of sight. Mm -hmm. Parents explain, sorry, parents explain your work and its purpose to your children and let them share in your preparation to keep the Sabbath according, according to the commandment. Thank you mm. so much, Brother Brighton. For now, we are going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue with this issue of how do we hallow the Sabbath? How do we keep it holy? Mm. See you after the break. Just before the break, we asked the question, how do we hallow the Sabbath? How do we keep it holy? And Brother Brighton had just started explaining to us about how we are supposed to keep the Sabbath holy. 
Yes, yes, yes. I actually read a quotation from uh, one of Mrs. Ellen G. White's books, Testimonies to the Church, when she explains on how we keep the Sabbath holy. And I need us to understand something. Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 3 says, Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God, which God had created and made. And then as you go to one of the books in the four Gospels, Christ then explains that uh, Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. And I think we need to understand that we observe the Sabbath because God sanctified it. Yes. We observe the Sabbath because of what it symbolizes. Mm -hmm. We don't merely uh, stop laboring on the Sabbath because it's the Sabbath. That's mm -hmm. why he, he, he then explained to them that man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for men. We observe the Sabbath because it, it shows that he is God. Yeah. That's mm. why in a modern society, whereby my, my form of work can just be waking up and turning on sprinklers, and then they sprinkle my whole garden, mm. still I do not do that. Yeah. Although I will have not labored, but because it is the Sabbath and I need to observe God's mm -hmm. law, mm -hmm. then I do it. It is not merely centered around laboring and mm -hmm. doing hard work, mm. but there are there are things we do not do. There are things we cease from, yes. not because it's just the Sabbath, but because we are worshiping God and God blessed and sanctified the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just need yeah. just to, to, to take from you right there. I'm going to be very brief. <laughs> yeah. um, Mark, I think, yeah, it's Mark chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. No, 27 and 28. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. Verse 28, mm. therefore. The Son of Man is Lord also of the, of Sabbath. the Sabbath. Now, just yes. the, the, back, the background to this was the whole plucking of corn on the Sabbath. Mm. Christ and his followers, they were plucking corn on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees accused them mm -hmm. of breaking the Sabbath, asking that, is it lawful? Mm. And just to cut it short, just to cut it short, Christ then reminds them, number one, that the Sabbath is meant for the benefit of humanity. Yes. Mm. And not men for the Sabbath. Yeah. So what it means is... A lifeless keeping of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. which is just a merely keeping the law, a stale keeping of the Sabbath, is, how can I put it, mm. a spiritless Sabbath observance mm -hmm. is not keeping the Sabbath, Sabbath holy. At all. Mm. Because if you are going to be robotic and, and mechanical in keeping the Sabbath, no, my brother, you are not supposed to do that on Sabbath. Mm. No, my brother, you are not supposed to serve food on Sabbath or whatever. Yeah. If we do that without the Spirit of Christ, then it defeats the purpose. Yes. Yeah. Which brings us to verse 28. It says, therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Meaning that Jesus is not only Lord, yeah. but he's Lord of the Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. And if something is a Lord or someone is a Lord, that means you submit. Yes. yes. The yeah. Sabbath submits to Jesus. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So, otherwise, so in other words, you've got Christ. And yeah. you've got the Sabbath which submits to Christ mm. because Christ, the agent of creation, created and rested on the Sabbath. Mm. Mm. So the Sabbath is like a madras, if I may say, mm. where Christ rested yeah. after he slept. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't put the madras on top of the one who rested. Mm. Mm. But Jesus must be at the center of your Sabbath experience. Yeah. Yeah. So for us to keep the Sabbath holy, we need the Lord of the Sabbath as the central focus yes. of your Sabbath observance. Yeah. Mm. And if that's the case, we know that Christ... The, the name Jesus means savior. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath also has salvific properties. Mm -hmm. And the, hence the Sabbath is also meant for the benefit of humanity. If ever there was a time where we were to uplift humanity mm -hmm. and give them spiritual rest from their problems mm -hmm. and their cares in life, it should be on the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Oh, I love that point. I think I just want to underscore what you know he said about the fact that Christ is central to the Sabbath. Yeah. So the Sabbath is not just about refraining from work but it's, it's central to the fact that we keep the Sabbath because we want to worship God. Yeah. And I'm actually reminded of, you know, Leviticus chapter 16, yeah. yes, when the children of Israel have, you know, come out of Exodus 16, pardon, when they come out of Egypt and mm. God then tries to restore the keeping of the Sabbath in their lives. You know, yeah. they had been living in Egypt, they had forgotten about keeping the law and God reintroduces the Sabbath in their lives by, you know, the manna. They were supposed to go out for six days to gather the manna, but the yep. seventh day, in the sixth day, they, they had to gather double twice portion. as much, yeah. right? A double portion so that on the Sabbath, they don't go out. Mm -hmm. And what you realize from there, at least for me, in terms of the essence or what God is trying to keep to teach us mm -hmm. about the Sabbath is the fact that 
God wants to teach us to depend on him. Yeah. And so when I cease from labor, I'm saying that it's not the work that sustains me, mm. but it's God that sustains yeah. me. So I don't work because I trust that when I'm ceasing from my labor, God is taking care of everything else. Just oh as much God. as we rest on Sabbath, yeah. the universe doesn't stop. Yep. When yeah. I'm sleeping, the universe doesn't stop. Yep. Why? Because there's a greater creator who is Lord of the Sabbath that is running all things. And so Amen. I don't have Amen. to work seven days Amen. because yeah. my God takes care of me on the seventh day when I'm not working. Mm. Amen. I'm glad you've, you've said that. Amen. Um, my, my whole life through, through school, uh, we all know how that, that goes. Yeah. Um, you come, each year gets harder than the last and mm. you feel that you need to put in more effort mm. um, just, just to keep up or at least to excel. Yes, mm. But I have never brought myself to do any, any sort of studying, any sort of revision on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that on the Sabbath, I won't worry about any of the problems I might be experiencing. Yes. Yeah. And that's why the Sabbath for me is a delight. Mm. I'd just like to read um, Isaiah chapter 58, uh, verse 13. Yeah. Yes, sir. It says, if thou, t if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, mm. from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, mm -hmm. and call the Sabbath a delight, the Holy Lord honorable, the Holy of the Lord honorable, mm. and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, mm. nor speaking thine own words. Verse 14, then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride up on the place on the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father from the mouth uh, of the Lord had spoken it now another thing I want to point out about the way I, I, I lived my life I, I pointed out that I didn't do any strenuous work any work that required my focus or any work at all mm. but the same applied to things that I actually enjoyed doing mm. for example uh, I've always loved sports I loved playing soccer, I played cricket, I played rugby. But you'll never see me playing those things on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So you see that the, 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 the Sabbath is not only, it's not only for the benefit, or, or rather it's, it, it doesn't only uh, say that you should not work. Yeah. Mm. But you should also keep from doing thine own pleasure. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So yes, there, sir. there's, a, Thank you for there's a significance here. There are people... Often, oftentimes we are told to, to do what we enjoy. Mm. That's, the, that's the career path we should, we should mm. choose. Yeah. We should always do something you enjoy. Uh, if you enjoy photography, then you should become a photographer. Yeah. But does that now mean because you enjoy doing something, it is not working? Mm. No, mm. it is still working. So even, your own, even the, own, the things that you find pleasurable, mm. uh, th those are things that you should uh, not do on the Sabbath. I am, I will admit, I am sometimes guilty of this as a football fan. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes mm -hmm. things happen around you and we live in a connected world. You yeah. can find out what's going on at the click of a button. Yes. And it's, it's, it's very easy for me to pull out my phone now and check, and check what's going on. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the, even, that, even that is something you should rest from yeah. because one day you will check what is going on and you will see your team losing 8-2. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not the point. The point is that the, the Sabbath day is holy. Uh, I would like to read a quote from Great Controversy, page 452, verse 3, yes, uh, ch paragraph 3. It says, again, the command is given. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. It is not wicked. It is not the wicked world, but those whom the Lord designates as mm. my people mm. that are to be reproved for their transgressions. Yes. He declares further, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook, forsook not the ordinance of their God. The, this scripture is found in Isaiah 58 verse 1 and 2. So now the, the, the quote goes on to say, here is brought to view a class who think themselves righteous and appear mm. to manifest great interest in the service of God. But the stern and solemn rebuke uh, of the searcher of hearts proves them to be trampling upon the divine precepts. Just to comment on Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14, you know, I think it's important to balance things out. It says that 
as much as we shouldn't seek for our own pleasure, mm -hmm. but the substitute for seeking for our own pleasure is to delight ourselves in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. most of the time Amen. what wow. we tend to do yeah. is that we, we, we like to emphasize that, not your pleasure, not your pleasure. And then what ends up happening is the Sabbath becomes a drag and people are sad and yeah. people come to church a in a spirit that isn't, yeah, they feel like they're restricted. They're not, they're not in a spirit of joy. Yeah. You know, they, it's as if they're not coming to God. They are coming to look at what people are doing at church, you know, mm -hmm. and to reprove mm -hmm. this and to reprove that. But, you know, Isaiah 58 tells us that we should delight ourselves in the Lord. Yes. You know, it's a day to spend time with God. Yes, it's a day to dedicate, rededicate ourselves to God, you know. It's not a day for us to be looking at the faults of other people. It's not mm. a day for us to be trying to see how better we are than other people, whether in, it's in the way that we dress. And we know sometimes our, us as church members, we like to dress a certain way to be yeah. seen. Yeah. Mm. But the Sabbath is not about that. Yeah. The Sabbath is about us spending more time with God. And I think that is actually the most important part about the Sabbath. Amen. That's amazing. You know, the Sabbath is about spending special personal time with God. We mm. spend personal time with God throughout the week. Yep. But then that day is dedicated especially to that. Mm. But uh, what can we say to a Christian, to somebody who loves God, who worships God, but they just don't keep the Sabbath? The Sabbath, people need to understand the Sabbath from the perspective of the Bible, yeah. mm. where it's not a polemic, okay. but it's rather allegiance to God as a way of worship. All right. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much. Just hold <laughs> that thought, Brother Caravo. After we come from the break, we're going to explore it some more. See you after the break. Today we are looking at chapter 26, a work of reform, and we are talking about Sabbath reform. Just before the break, Brother Karabo was making a point, so I'm going to give it back to him to finish his point. Thank you, Madam yes. <laughs> All right, so when we look at the Sabbath doctrine in its Old Testament roots, it first appears as a creation doctrine, right? The doctrine of creation, yeah. that God created and rested on the seventh day, yeah. and therefore we must enter into that rest because, we rest, because he rested, right? But... When you move towards the prophets in the Old Testament, you, you notice a pattern. Yeah. And there's just one prophet who I've elected to make my illustration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the Israelites rebelled against God, they turned their face from Jehovah worship yeah. mm. to the idols. Yeah. But yeah. when they did that, they desecrated the Sabbath. Mm. Mm. So in the Old Testament, you've got two things. Apostasy, two, apostasy from Jehovah worship resulted in the worship of the sun, the constellation. Okay. That's Old Testament cosmology. Do you mm. understand what I'm saying? Yes. So we, we need to understand that motif. And I'm, I'm just going to use Ezekiel chapter 20, and I'm going to try and read it in context okay. so we can understand. Verse 12, all right. And Ezekiel chapter 20 really is the narrative of Israel's rebellion. Yeah. Mm. And verse 12 says, Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths mm. to be a sign Fine. between me and them. Yeah. This is, he's talking about Israel, his covenant mm -hmm. people at that time. Mm -hmm. Me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them, meaning the Lord who makes them holy, right? Mm -hmm. But listen to this, listen to verse 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me wow. in the wilderness, and they walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths, they mm. greatly polluted. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon Upon, uh, upon them in the wilderness to consume them. So do you see that? Yeah. Rebellion to God leads to them doing what? Polluting, Polluting the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Mm. Which is something that God gave them as a sign between him and them that they may know that he's the God who makes them holy. The implication is the heathen gods do not make us holy. Mm. They defile us. You watch television. Yeah. You see homosexuality. Oh my goodness. You see people who venerate the dead. Yeah. Uh, they'll tell you that <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And you see all of that, that what kind of an ancestor requires you to have a relationship with another man as a man in order for you to have power. Mm. And then this text says that I, I moreover gave them my Sabbaths that they should know 
that I am their God who sanctifies them and makes them yeah. holy because the other gods defile them. Mm. But when Israel turns from Jehovah worship, they desecrate the Sabbath of mm. the Lord. Yes. yes, to build on to what Brother Karabo has just said, I'm going to read from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 to 9. Mm. To those of us mm. who have known these precious truths, especially this special truth about the Sabbath, Amen. the onus is on us. Yeah. to conscientize others, to let them know about this precious truth. Because the law of God cannot be kept in part. Yep. It can only be kept as a whole. Amen. So I'm just going to read from here, from uh, Gen Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 7. And the Spirit of the Lord says, So thou, O son of man, yep. I have set thee as a watchman mm -hmm. unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth mm -hmm. and warn them for me. Mm. Verse 8 says, When I say unto the wicked, O wicked men, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his ways, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Mm. Verse 9, Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked to turn from his ways, if he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but mm. thou hast delivered thy soul. Mm. And therefore God is calling us at this point in time yeah. to do the work of reformers. Amen. But as Brother Karabo has already put it out there, the Sabbath truth is not a popular truth. No. It is something that is very unsettling, especially to those who call themselves Christians already. Mm. Mm. And therefore this will take courage it will take fortitude. Amen. It will take a strong connection with our God Leadership. to be able to do this. Amen. Yeah. So what manner of people ought we to be to oh. be effective reformers? Lord. Yeah. When Mrs. Ellen G. White explains it, she then says the work needs to be done for inside the church, that's where the transgression is found. Wow. Mm. But let's parallel it. You see, he talked about the children of Israel in the wilderness. It was not God's plan, by the way, that the children of, of Israel wander the wilderness. Yes. But it was because of their unbelief. Yes, sir. Yeah. And in like manner, it is not God's will that we persevere in this painful world yeah. for so much long. Mm -hmm. But it is because of unbelief mm -hmm. that we are still here. And then when Peter explains it in 2 Peter uh, 3 verses 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, mm -hmm. as some count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that, the, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm going to, 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 to read a, a paragraph uh, from, from the chapter, chapter 26. The page is 458. It reads, In mercy to the world, Jesus delays his coming, mm -hmm. that sinners may have an opportunity to yeah. hear the warning and Amen. find in him a shelter before the wrath of God Amen. shall be poured out. Mm -hmm. You read a quotation from, from Ezekiel mm -hmm. where uh, God says to Ezekiel, I have, set you, I, I, I have made you a watchman mm -hmm. and the one whose soul will be lost because you have not told them, mm -hmm. I will count you accountable for mm -hmm. that soul. Amen. But if you read the chapter going down, ah. it will then explain that not only was that decree in the day of Ezekiel, yes, but sir. that decree yes, lies with us today. Amen. And then my question is, if we have that decree, Decree, if we are commanded to go and spread the word, mm -hmm. and the reason why ah. the Lord has not returned yet, mm -hmm. it is not because the word has not been spread. Yes. Yes. Are we not guilty of not spreading the word? Hey. Mm. Hey. Acts chapter 5 is my answer. Oh, Acts okay. chapter 5, when okay. we read about the apostles, right? <laughs> yes, um, I'm going to read verse 14. It says, And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and mm -hmm. beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them Thank go. You, Verse 41, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Oh. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And I also like verse 29, which says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather, rather than, than men. Hey. So for me, it, it's, it's mm. that, that, you know, if, if the apostles could count themselves worthy, you know, if the reformers could count themselves worthy to suffer all the things that they have suffered, mm. then we have no excuse. Yeah. You know, we've been given yeah. an example. And God yeah. says, you know, that with this example, we can do the very same. And, yeah. you know, high 
at the at the highest point of it is the fact that we ought to obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. So whether they put us in prisons, whether they kill us, whether they do anything to us, as we've seen with the reformers, yeah. Yeah. we ought to obey God right. rather than men. Right. Beautiful. Uh, interesting fact. Uh, hate speech is, is a crime in South Africa. <laughs> yes. Hate speech is a crime in South Africa. Now, I'd like to read a quote before I, I elaborate on why I am saying this. The quote says, and the Bible plainly teaches that a time is approaching when the laws of the state will so conflict with the law of God <laughs> that whosoever would obey all the divine precepts must brave reproach and punishment as an <laughs> evildoer. <laughs> so, why, why, why did I now? Why did I say that uh, hate speech is 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 a is a crime? Mm. If you if you read the Bible, if you read Leviticus chapter eighteen verse twenty two, I believe mm -hmm. it says a man should not lie with another man. That mm. is an abomination. Yes. Mm. The, the the age in which we live, mm. you cannot say that and not be accused of hate speech. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Just quoting words from the law of love, the word of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. paints you as an evildoer. Um, mm -hmm. To close off our session for today, mm -hmm. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 51, verses mm -hmm. 7 mm -hmm. to 8. The Lord says, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, yeah. Neither be ye afraid of their revilings. Yeah. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, mm. and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. We are called upon to choose the right because it is right, mm -hmm. and to leave the consequences God. with God. We are called upon to be people of principle and not people who live by policy. Thank you so much for joining us for this particular session. May the Holy Spirit, the spirit of courage, take over in your life and may you do the work of reform. To close off, I'm going to ask my brother Tabello to pray for us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have given us. Lord, we ask that uh, you continue to be with us after what we have heard. Lord, we ask that you may guide us not only in our walking life, but our spiritual works. Uh, we ask that you protect us and we ask that you forgive us for the sins we have committed. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.